Welcome to another BTL exclusive college football group of five preview on the Book It Sports podcast network. Before we dive in, please give us a follow on Spotify or wherever you get your podcast, Apple Music, wherever. And make sure if you're watching on YouTube, please drop a like and let us know in the comments what you think of this podcast and college football group of five preview. Javon, I'm excited to dive into some of these smaller conferences. We just did a preview on the uh, Power Five conferences. I guess now it's what? Power Three? Power Four? We just went over that one. A lot of changes going on right now in college football. Uh, We're going to go over some of the smaller conferences today. I'm very excited to cover some of these. The American Conference USA, the MAC, Mountain West, and of course, the Fun Belts. All right, we're going to go over all these. Our main goal here, Javon, is to find who we think is going to end up making the college football playoffs from these group of five conferences. All right, we're going to try to find maybe some futures for the people, teams we think, you know, with some good value on these future lines. Who could sneak into the college football playoffs from these smaller conferences? That is our goal. And we're obviously going to break down these conferences as well. Who we think is going to win some sleeper picks, maybe some win totals as well. Give you guys some winners for this upcoming season. That sound like a plan, Javon. You excited to talk about some of these group of five conferences and teams. Pretty excited. Yeah. I love getting involved with some, uh, some futures, some win totals, some everything for the group of five. I live more so in the, I don't know, middle of the pack teams for the power four and below that, which would, Falling to the group of five teams. So I, I love a couple of these teams. So I'm excited to talk about them. Sure. And I know you have some futures on your radar and some teams you believe in from these conferences. Excited to hear you gas some of these teams up. Let the people know where they can make some coins betting on some of these teams throughout this upcoming 2024 season. All right. So before we dive in, let's go ahead and talk about the AAC. All right. Let's talk about the American Conference first here, Javon. We've got Memphis as the clear cut favorite at plus 220. Right behind them, Tulane, plus 310. You've got the Roadrunners of UTSA lurking behind them at plus 450. And then a little bit of a drop-off here with some schools like USF, Rice, and then some serious value with the ECU Pirates, North Texas, Army, the newcomers as well in this conference. The only new addition to this conference this year that added a bunch of new teams last year, Javon, like Charlotte, North Texas, FAU, Rice, UAB, and UTSA this upcoming season. They're only adding Army, so that's the only significant change in the American Conference. Um, Now, three different teams have won the AAC over the last three years, Javon. It's going to be Memphis this year looking to make it four different teams in a row in the last four years um, as they're the clear-cut favorites here to win the American. And they've got some really good players as well. They've got Seth Hannick and Javon, who had nearly 4K passing yards and 32 touchdowns last season. Uh, They bring back 11 starters, and they're coming off a great 10-3 and year. Now, their defense does need to improve if they want to make the college football playoffs, but they did add a new defensive coordinator this year in Jordan Hankins that could end up benefiting that defensive unit. Are we buying into Memphis? I know they're one of the teams in the group of fives that has the shortest odds to make the college football playoffs. Yeah, I really like Memphis, and it's it's tough to say otherwise, looking at everything they're bringing back, not just Seth Hannigan, who I guess is one of the only like big time quarterbacks coming back to the same team in the AAC. So it's hard to not respect them. I just feel like this conference as a whole is so wide open. Obviously like the, uh, the Memphis Tigers should be favorites for a reason. They're bringing back a lot, but then you have Tulane who's breaking in a new regime uh, UTSA, which is effectively doing the same thing. This is the first time they've been without Frank Harris and God knows how long. So, I mean, Those three teams, I feel like, were the clear-cut favorites, you know, last year along with SMU. Uh, So, you have them. You have USF, who has made steps, and they're a really good team. Rice, we can talk about them for a little bit. I think they're a really, really good team. So, uh, between everybody that the people on the YouTube can see on the left side of the screen here, Memphis, Tulane, UTSA, USF, and Rice, I feel like it's anybody's conference out of those four teams. I agree. I know Memphis is technically the favorite, right? But – I feel like there's a lot of teams lurking around that could potentially win this conference and shock some people. It wouldn't be that much of a shock to us. I know you've got a sleeper team you want to talk about in this conference. I've got a couple as well. Um, So let's move on from Memphis here. Let's talk about a couple of these other squads. You got UTSA, the Roadrunners. Now they lose their star QB, Frank Harris, Javon, but they do bring in Luke McCown, right? Uh, Josh McCown's son. So we'll see how that goes. Um, They do return four of their five starting O-linemen as well, but they do lose a ton of defensive depth. Uh, in 2024. So their defense will not be as elite or as good and strong as it looked last year or in years past. I'm a little bit worried about the Roadrunners defense, not really buying too much into that squad right this moment. And then you got Tulane, 
whose odds are actually in between Memphis and UTSA. You'd think Tulane, after how they finished the season last year, after you know they've got a new coach coming in, you'd think they wouldn't be getting this much line respect and be the second shortest odds to win this conference. I think that's very telling personally after this team gets spanked by the Hokies in the bowl game last year um, and really did not end the season very strong. But now they have a new coach who I really like, John Sumrall, coming over from Troy after he rebuilt that program, made their defense absolutely elite. Um, I would not be surprised if we see Tulane bounce back and get back to this elite form of the group of five teams um, a little bit quicker than a lot of people are expecting with their coach on the way out, right? I know they um, you know, are going to be looking for a new quarterback. Michael Pratt's gone, but they bring in the Oregon transfer, Ty Thompson, and they also have Kai Horton, a junior who's been there. Uh, they're going to be battling and outs, and I think it'll probably be Ty Thompson for Oregon, but they've got some options, and they have a great offensive line as well, Javon. Their defense should also get significantly better bringing in Coach Sumrall, who's a defensive mastermind. That Troy defense has been nasty, getting better and better over the last couple of years. That is a massive upgrade for a Tulane team that's always been able to score points, Javon, but they cannot stop the bleeding on the defensive side of the ball. I'm buying in into Tulane with their new coach, Javon. I don't care if it's his first season. I'm all in on John Sumrall, and I like Tulane a plus 310 to win this conference and shock Memphis, who's one of those teams who people already assume is going to be going to the college football playoffs um, and be one of the better group of five teams in the nation. Yeah, I don't hate that take from you at all. I think Memphis uh, is, I guess, the most talented team on paper. But again, like I said, there's a lot of teams that can make a running for it because I guess it's the same thing with pretty much every team in this conference. But not, no one team really has a strong defense, which is why I think mm. it's as open as it is. And uh, the angle of, you know, Summerall coming over from Troy and defense is his backbone. Maybe he can help build something at Tulane. Which, yes. I mean, not, not that they're uh, – They've had a really good defense over the years, but they're losing that regime. I, I don't think there's going to be that much of a drop off. So I'm kind of with you on Tulane of being the team out of the couple favorites there to make the move towards the top. And I definitely have a sleeper that I think will be in the mix too, Krabs. Let's hear about it. The Rice Owls, who are wow. sitting at plus 1,500. My main play, I guess, is the win total, which I really, really love. Six and a half, super juicy or seven flat, but. I think this team is going to be really, really good. Their offense has always been there. The defense was tough last season, but they bring in a little bit of experience. They bring in some transfers on the defensive side of the ball, so I think they're going to be much, much improved. They also bring in EJ Warner. So if we're talking about son of uh, NFL kids, not that Josh McCown is Kurt Warner, but Kurt Warner's <laughs> son, who was previously at Temple, and he had like set the record as receiving core did for most drops in a college football season. His offensive line was terrible, so... I think this the skill and the tools were always there for EJ Warner. We just weren't able to see it because that Tulane program or that Temple program, sorry, was an absolute shambles. Now he gets to step over to an air raid offense with a lot of weapons, a much better offensive line and a run game in Dean Connors, who's also a big facet in the receiving game. I think that offense, we talk about like Hennigan, how good that offense is going to be. We talk about Tulane, how good that offense can be. Byron Brown and USF also going to have a really good offense like I'd put Rice up there this year with any of those teams. So if we're talking about shootouts, which, frankly, a lot of these teams at the top are going to have to win to win this conference, I wouldn't be too scared of the Rice Owls offense going toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody. So I think they're going to be in the mix. Are you going to have a sprinkle on Rice at plus 1,500 to win the American? I will, of course. Okay. But your main bet in this conference, your meet on tape play, has to be their win total over 6.5 or over 7. Yes, I already have six Got and a half punched in. I, I purposely saved some units to see. Yeah, it's probably eventually going to go up to seven and a half or seven just flat. So I want to get a better price on that because I do think they went eight. Sure. But. Okay. That is a hot take. The Rice Owls winning eight games this year. Wouldn't that be something? I feel like you got to have yeah. some skin on them to win the American if you think they win eight games. Jeez. Have to. Have to. All right. And speaking of important games, um, I'm looking at the schedule here for Tulane. I'm circling back to them. They've got two really tough games at the beginning of the season here, Javon. They welcome in Kansas State for the second game of the season at home for a matchup on September 7th. And then the week after that, they go on the road at Oklahoma. Now, if Tulane wants to win this conference, if Tulane wants to be one of the better teams in the group of five, they're probably going to have to win one of these two games. Maybe not to win their conference, obviously. It doesn't matter. But if they want to be one of the best teams and be the highest ranked group of five squads, they're probably going to have to pull off an upset in one of those two games, right? And they're one of the only smaller schools or smaller programs that has two really tough games against ranked squads. 
Yeah, that's what makes it difficult because uh, I do think Tulane can win this conference. I do think they can be in the mix for the playoff, but the American to me just seems like it's going to beat up on itself a little bit, which not that Tulane playing Kansas State and Oklahoma and, and non-con is that necessarily, but it feels like a couple of these teams at the top just have so much upside, whether it's Memphis Tulane or whether it's the sneak rice, the sneak USF, maybe UTSA is even a little better than a lot of people think, including myself. It just feels like everything has to go really well for one of these teams. We talked a little bit on BTL about SMU last year. I was really high on them getting through with a, a relatively easy schedule. And I just don't know if any of these teams has that same possibility. That's why like the Americans going to get, a little leeway, I guess just a, a little swayed opinion into getting the playoffs. because I feel like they're the best group of five conference by a decent margin. I just don't know if they're going to get there this year. Mm. Okay. Okay. What about any of these, um, you know, teams towards the bottom of the barrel in this conference, North Texas, Army, FAU, UAB, um, or even some schools like Navy. Uh, are you feeling anything about some of these teams who are not projected to be as successful in the American uh, not too much. The bottom of the American just feels like an absolute cesspool, to be honest with you, a team that I'm I'm really, really low on and I think is going to be very bad. And I, I say this because I want to take some shots fading them early in the season in their non-conference when they play teams like, I don't even want to say Northwestern State, but tricky game, I think trickier than it seems. But like Arkansas State, who we'll talk about in a little bit, I think is going to be pretty good. They play Oklahoma State in non-conference. So I'm talking about Tulsa. I think they are going to be uh, – not great to be generous okay. this season. Their win total sitting at four and a half, and I really want to take the under. So that's the huh. only relatively strong position I guess I have in the bottom of the American. All right. No Navy love. You don't think the midshipmen bounce back this year? No Navy love. I don't know. I, I, I'll i tell you who I'm a little interested to see, and I don't know what the status is as far as the starter yet, but we did get a Max Brown transfer from Florida to Charlotte. I feel like that could be a, a sneaky – on offense assuming he does get the starting nod huh well they have the second longest odds to win this conference i mean temple sitting at plus thirty five thousand. by the yeah, way to win I mean, this conference that's absurd they're <laughs> terrible and i mean charlotte's also going to be terrible i just feel like mm -hmm. they they could have a couple games where they're a little in the mix i guess they're uh randomly their non-conference is actually one of the hardest in not named Tulane in the conference they play huh JMU, they go to UNC and they also go to Indiana, which is, I don't know, interesting. Other than like Tulane, Tulane plays those two games. USF also goes to Alabama. Like there's not many teams with many harder non conference games than those, or at least a slate in its entirety harder than those. Who's making the schedule for Charlotte? Why do they think they're Notre Dame? What are they doing? <laughs> they need some money, man. They need some buy games. That's a good point. Sure. All right. Well, that's a W preview of the American Conference here, Javon. Before we wrap up, let me get your favorite bet for the season in this conference. I'm assuming I already know what it is, but I want to hear it. Yep. My favorite bet of the season in the American is Rice over six and a half or seven if you have that wins. I think that team is going to be really good and win eight plus. All right. Watch out for the Rice Owls. No Luke McCaffrey, but we'll see if they can do something on offense this year and shock some people. All right. I'm going with Tulane plus 310 to win the American. I think they shocked the world. Not really, but I think they bounce back and regroup um, after getting a new coach. I love their new coach, and I think they'll shock the world and beat Memphis, who everyone's already locked in as the winner of this conference and potentially go into the college football playoffs as the best team in the group of five. Everyone's all over Memphis. I'm not buying it. I need to see their defense improve. I don't think they will. I want to lean on the one team who I believe will have the most improved defense in this conference this year, and that is Tulane with their new head coach, the defensive mastermind from Troy. All right. Let's talk about the Conference USA, Javon. There is a new addition this year. Kennesaw State joins this conference. All right. That probably doesn't mean much. I'll be completely honest. And look, I'm seeing, obviously, my team, my arch nemesis, um, and we're going to talk about them, Sam Houston State, obviously, in this conference as well. I know our listeners are very, very interested to see if I have any thoughts on that team, the Bearcats in 2024. But the main squad, obviously, to talk about here, Javon, is the Liberty Flames. Okay, Liberty, I mean, they were great last season. They went to the college football playoffs. People forget. And they return star QB, Caden Salter. Now, they do lose three starting O-linemen this year, Javon. That could be tough. They won't look as strong, that unit, in 2024 compared to last year when they were elite. 
Um, and their defense already struggled um, last year. They were giving up 5.7 yards per play, and they lose a ton of talent on that side of the ball as well. So although Liberty is minus 200 to win the Conference USA, I would not put all my eggs in that basket. I think their defense regresses. I think Caden Salter won't look as sharp with that O-line taking a step back. And I think 2023 was Liberty's year. I want to look somewhere else um, in this conference for 2024, Javon. What are your initial thoughts on the Conference USA? Yeah, I mean, I think Liberty is going to have the best chance here, like a perfect season. Because again, while we're while we're talking about teams that have potential to make the college football playoff as the highest ranked group of five, they were the only one out of like the big favorites, at least in name teams that just have absolutely nobody that's a threat in non-conference. Like we were talking about Tulane, they go to Kansas State and Oklahoma, like Memphis goes to Florida State, obviously better schools, bigger schools from the Americans, like they can play those games, but Liberty doesn't. So if we're talking about a team to potentially go perfect again and make the playoff, I wouldn't be shocked. I do think there's room for a little regression, but in this conference, especially with how the bottom of the conference looks, it's it's really tough to imagine. So I, I'm not against Liberty this year. I'll say that. Well, they are minus 200. Yeah, they're fair. minus 200 for a reason. <laughs> Well, I want to talk about some of these other teams that have a chance. You've got Western Kentucky, who let a lot of people down last year. They had Austin Reed, a QB. A lot of people bought into that program, who's been pretty solid in the group of five in recent years. But Javon, they kind of let people down last year. They blew it. Um, they won't have Reed under center this season, but they do welcome in TJ Finley, which should be interesting. I don't know if I'm buying into Western Kentucky. They cost me a ton of coins last season. I just don't know if I could really turn it around and back that squad this year, but I wouldn't be shocked narrative wise. If after a very disappointing 2023, the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers show back up again in conference USA and make it a little bit weird. I would not be shocked one bit. Although they don't have Reed, they replace him with a pretty solid QB in Finley. Then you've got Jacksonville state. All right. This is a very interesting team. Javon uh, shout out rich Rodriguez for growing this team. Um, and they had a great debut in the FBS last year. They do lose their star QB, Zion Webb, who was like 30 years old. That guy played college football forever. Um, but they still do have Smothers, who's a stud, dual threat QB as well. And a couple other QBs. There's going to be a QB competition for Jacksonville State this year, which is a good thing. They've got plenty of options under center to replace uh, Zion Webb. They also have great running back depth. They've got three stud running backs in Anwar Lewis, Andrew Paul, the Georgia transfer, and Ron Wiggins. Plenty of great running backs. And if they end up starting Smothers, that's going to be a really tough offense to slow down. They could run the heck out of the football. Smothers, great rushing QB, in my opinion. I think he takes a step up this year and probably wins that starting job as well. Um, now, they did lose their defensive coordinator to Oklahoma. Um, you could tell how good and, and how much they overperformed last year when they're losing their D.C. to schools like Oklahoma, right? That's pretty crazy how it sounds going from Jacksonville State to the Sooners. Give me a break. Um, so they do have to replace that, but their defense and their team should be really good once again. This team was super profitable last year, one of the most profitable teams against the spread, really shocked some people in their first year in FBS. I would not be surprised if the Gamecocks, you know, win this conference or at least have another great improving season in 2024 in the Conference USA. Yeah, I agree. I think both of those teams will be good again. I'm not quite there with saying Jacksonville State's going to take a step, especially because like we were we we saw it all last year. I mean, there were not many luckier teams in college football than Jacksonville State. Every single ball went their way. I think they're 4-0 yep. and one-score games, and they talk about what they did against the spread. Part of that had to do with the fact that I don't think the books knew how to price them first season in the FBS, but again, like everything went their way. They were the team that beat every metric, beat every number. So coming into this year, I don't I love teams backing like that. I usually love to fade teams like that. Most of them are bigger teams, but Regardless, I, I don't know if I can get there at Jacksonville State, especially with all the movement, like you talked about the D.C., and I like Smothers, but Zion Webb was simply that guy. The team that I think I, I like a little more out of the two is Western Kentucky, and I don't even know if it's going to be T.J. Finley yet who starts for this team because, I don't know, you probably, this might be burned into your brain, grabs what happened in the bowl game for Western Kentucky mm -hmm. where Velt Camp came in and had the greatest performance of all time when it was reported that he was starting like right before the game. Uh, sure. and the, the line moved and everything, and he came out and looked like Brady. So, I mean, I think for both of those guys, maybe TJ Finley mainly, because he already has a chip on his shoulder coming down to Western Kentucky from power programs. But uh, 
give him another one in a QB competition where I think he's going to be forced to be really damn good if he already isn't going to be great in that system already. So I think that offense is going to do amazing things, just like Western Kentucky's offense always is. And I think the defense will be good enough, especially in this conference, to make some noise. So I, I like their over win total. Hmm. Now, I do think it's a good sign for Western Kentucky seeing them have the second shortest odds to win this conference preseason. You'd think, looking back at last year, that it would probably be Jacksonville State, right? Having the second shortest yeah. odds to win this conference. But you see the Hilltoppers in there at plus 450 um, at the second shortest odds to win the Conference USA. That's some respect for the Hilltoppers after a letdown year. And that's definitely a narrative I can get behind, right? After I think. Um, a very disappointing 2023. Also, I mean, worth noting, you know, like like we talked about Jacksonville State, I mean, kind of everything went their way. I think the schedule also did a little bit last year. Uh, for what it's worth, they do have to go to Liberty and to Western Kentucky, which will not be Oof. incredibly easy games, especially if those end up, you know, the race ends up setting up just like the odds preseason say, which I think is possible. Sure. All right, cut the shit, Javon. We got to talk about Sam Houston State. All right, we got to talk about the Bearcats, who are plus 1,800, the fourth shortest odds to win the Conference USA, which is pretty crazy after you look back at last season um, and their records and how many coins they cost me. I mean, I don't know if there's a team that has cost me more coins in one individual season than the Sam Houston State Bearcats last year. It's close. I mean, they lost every damn game. They were sharp every game. The odds makers thought they were going to be the greatest uh, team uh, to ever exist, and they would always fall short. But Javon, if you actually look back at last season for Sam Houston State, was it really as bad as the record shows? They lost six games by 10 or less points in their FBS debut. Look, they had some nerves. They didn't know how to close. And you talked about Jacksonville State being the luckiest team in college football last year. Statistically, Sam Houston State was the unluckiest team in college football last year. They lost every close game. They had a really tough go at it, tough schedule in their first year in the FBS. Uh, but I'm buying low on the Bearcats, and I'm giving them one more chance. I can't believe I'm saying it when they employ a guy like Nelson as their offensive coordinator, former Hokies offensive coordinator. But there are a lot of good things and aspects about this Bearcats team that I want to buy low on. First off, the fact that they're the four shortest odds to win this conference ahead of schools like Louisiana Tech and Middle Tennessee State who have shown that they are better football programs than Sam Houston in recent years, I think is a little bit telling. Number two, thankfully, they do not have Keegan Shoemaker under center this year. I mean, he was atrocious for the Bearcats yes, last season. So bad. It's pro he was the worst. I mean, he was the worst throws yeah, for them. He if you want to talk about if you want to talk about why they were one of the unluckiest teams in football, like a lot of that always has to do with turnovers, you can look to that man right there because he was terrible. Yep. So they'll have an upgraded QB this year with Jace Bauer coming in from Central Michigan. He should win the starting QB job, and he's a dual-threat QB, which is huge. Adds another aspect to that offense that Shoemaker really did not provide. Now, their defense is their strength. The Bearcats relied on their defense. I mean, you could even tell last year they had a really solid defense, and they had an NFL player, a linebacker in Trevor Williams, great name, um, who will not be returning this year, unfortunately, Javon, but they do, re they do return the majority of their starting defense which is a great sign for the Bearcats, who I want to buy Lowell. All right, no Keegan Shoemaker. Uh, hopefully they won't be the unluckiest team in football two years in a row. If anything, I want to buy into that narrative and back them to have some luck on their side in 2024, right? Their win total this year, Javon, it's only at four and a half. I mean, if they won a couple of those close games or overtime games, the six they lost by 10 or less points last year, the win total for them would probably be around five and a half or six for 2024, but they blew all those games last season. I'm buying low on the Bearcats. I can't believe I'm saying it after all the trash I've talked about Cornelson in this program, but I can't resist after diving into them. And I know they're going to come in extra motivated with a chip on their shoulder after blowing all those close games in 2023 in their first season in the FBS. All right, I'll back them in year two when they've got a season under, under their belts. I think they'll be a little more comfortable and they have a much better QB under seven. Give me the Bearcats. Over four and a half wins. There's a reason why the over is so juiced on the books after a terrible season last year. Yeah, and I, I will say, like, the the win total, I don't know if people are going to be able to get live Sam Houston state lines, but I think they're going to have a pretty tough time in non-conference. But once they get mm. to the conference play, anything can happen because they have a, a schedule that sets up pretty beautifully too. They got to go. They have a lot of 
not easier home games, but all the biggest teams on their schedule for the most part are coming right to Sam Houston and they have a pretty easy road schedule. So I, uh, I'm pretty high on pretty much every team, literally every team they play in non-conference rice, UCF and Hawaii. So I think that's potentially an O for three. I would hope it's an O for three, but once they probably, get to see USA. Probably O and three. They have a tough non-conference schedule, like you're saying, yeah, right? But if tough. they can get into conference play, maybe they squeak an upset early. Probably won't. I still think this team can get five wins in their conference if needed. All right? I They're going to look like a completely different program in 2024. Luck is going to be on their side. Do not sleep on the Bearcats. And I cannot believe I'm saying this, but do not sleep on Brad Cornelson and this offense with a new QB under center. I want to tell believe. you – Real quick before we wrap up CUSA, one of the wins on the road that I think they can get, Krabs, mm. UTEP. Whoa. UTEP, I want to take, not want to take, I have taken, they're under four wins. I think there Whoa. is a legitimate chance that UTEP ends with one to two wins this season. I think they're going to be extremely bad for a couple different reasons. Like their team's gutted for the most part. Like the one, I don't know, one good thing you could point to for UTEP is that they do bring back Cade McConnell, but I don't think that's a good thing because that guy was absolutely terrible last season and uh, quite a few different ways. So they get him like they lose everything other than that, like their running back room that was actually relatively deep. Like when you look at it, they had Torrance Burgess and Deion Hankins. They both darted the Texas state under that new regime. Uh, Kelly Akarai, who was really good. And I thought he was going to be the follow up to Tieran Smith gone, went to miss state. So for Cade McConnell, who already is bad, he's coming back now to an offense with no weapons, no offensive line, no defensive line. The defense is absolutely terrible. Uh, and when you look at their schedule, I don't know where the wins are coming from, craps, to be honest <laughs> with you. Uh, the two games that I guess you could say are very, very winnable. They play Southern Utah and Kennesaw State. Kennesaw State is first year up from FCS, and Southern Utah is actually in the FCS. I don't think they win more than one of those games. And God forbid they do. I think there's a chance they lose every single game on the schedule other than those. Wow. I think they're going to be the worst team in the Conference USA this year. Okay. The UTEP Miners. Fading them. Guys, you can get their under four wins at plus 105 right now. Plus chicken under fading UTEP. I like it, Javon. That team is going to have a tough time in non-conference play to start the year. They might not even win that game against that FCS squads. And then they got to go into an underrated conference, in my opinion, with some squads looking to prove some stuff like Western Kentucky, like Sam Houston, like Jacksonville State, trying to prove that they're a legitimate program under Rich Rodriguez. Liberty trying to defend their crown, right, after a perfect regular season. There's a lot of solid teams in this conference, Javon. Are there any teams worth a sprinkle that you think could be a dark horse or a potential sleeper that has some value? Or do you think this is too top-heavy of a conference? I think it's too top heavy, but I mean, the only team that I think is worth a value sprinkle, unfortunately, I mean, good for you, but not really. It's Sam Houston State. Wow. I think that's the team, the only team that's hanging, what, four digits on the win the conference price that I would even think about taking. Well, I'll give a little bit of a, I don't even want to call it easier because you're still back in Sam Houston to win games, but I like their over four and a half wins and minus 125. I think that's absolutely hilarious that their over four and a half wins is juiced to minus 125 after how atrocious they were in 2023. I think that's a pretty solid sign. Not only that, but also the fact that they're the fourth shortest odds to win the Conference USA. Do not sleep on the Bearcats this season. They might shock some people. All right. They're coming for bloods after a very unlucky first FBS season. Okay. Javon. Who do you have winning the Conference USA before we move? I have Liberty. I'm not going to take okay. it because it's minus 200, minus 200 for a reason. But I uh, I think there's a couple potholes for Western Kentucky and Jacksonville State and Sam Houston State for that matter. But I think it'll be a closer race than maybe the odds indicate. Hmm. 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 Well, after talking through it with you and talking about the Hilltoppers a lot, Javon, I'm going to go with Western Kentucky. At plus 450, I think their odds being the second shortest in this conference is hilarious after a letdown year, and they have a ton to prove. New QB coming in. Nobody's buying stock in them after losing Reed, but that team let down a lot of people in 2023. Watch out for the Hilltoppers. I wouldn't be shocked if they end up knocking off Liberty and win the conference USA at plus 450. 
All right. You know, I can get but down my with favorite, that. I do want it on record. My favorite play, though, for the season in the Conference USA, as crazy as it is, is Sam Houston State over four and a half wins. <laughs> Unbelievable how we're here. I love it. I love it. Unbelievable. All right. Let's talk about the Mac. Javon, the Mac. Very, very fun league to bet on, right? Towards later on in the season, you get Tuesday night, Wednesday night games. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty freaking dialed into the Maction this year, and I've got some thoughts on some of these top teams. We could start out by talking about Miami of Ohio. All right, this team, uh, unbelievable defense last year. I mean, they were one of the best defenses in college football. I don't care what conferences you're talking about. They were elites. They held MAC teams to 11 points per game last year, and they returned more than half of their starters. Now, Javon, um, the transfer portal did hit the MAC very hard this offseason. Not really shocking, right? In a time of NIL, in a time where transfers are expected um, and honestly encouraged, this conference lost a lot of their great talents. But Miami of Ohio does return a lot of their guys still. And look, I was really impressed with Brett Gabbert um, and how good that defense really was cooking for him in 2023. I think they will be just as good, if not better, in 2024. And there's a reason why they're the favorites to win the MAC for this upcoming season. Now, Toledo is an interesting team that is always up there in the MAC. They're always doing things, at least the last couple of years. They've been really solid. They did lose their QB, Daquan Finn, to Baylor, and they have a brutal schedule this season. They play some of the best MAC teams early on this year. So I'm not really that high in, on Toledo, but the odds makers are, right? They're the second shortest odds to win this conference, right behind Miami of Ohio at plus 280. Javon, what are your thoughts on these two front runners in the MAC? Yeah, it's it's difficult for me because I, I really want to buy into Miami, Ohio, just being the team that's one of the rare teams, like you said, that's bringing back a lot and they're building from something really good too in the defense that they had last year and with Gabbert. Um, then you have Toledo who blew their shot and probably should have finished a little stronger than they did if they had chance after chance after chance after chance uh, late in that season. But I don't know. I feel like this is a conference that's built for madness. It always is. And I probably want to take my shot a little further down the board with a longer Ooh. shot to win the conference. Can I interest you in the NIU Huskies? I won't disagree. At plus 650 to win the MAC. Let's not forget about Coach Hammock's Huskies. All right. This team won the MAC in 2021. If you guys don't know Coach Hammock, he is one of the larger coaches in college football. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but he's an absolute character on the sidelines. Hilarious, uh, very um, extra and adamant with his motions. He's fucking funny as shit to watch on the sidelines. Uh, very energetic coach is probably the right way to describe him. Uh, but he's on the hot seat, I'd say, right now, because this team has really taken a step back since they won the MAC in 2021. But Javon, after a pretty solid end to the season last year where this team did sneak into a bowl opportunity and then went on to win that game, finished the season 7-6 and six last year, after a really, really bad season the year before, um, they do return 13 starters in 2024. The Huskies do at NIU, um, and they probably have the best offensive line in the MAC as well. Now, who's going to play quarterback? That's the main question here because no Rocky Lombardi. He's out of eligibility. That guy was like 40 years old when he retired. He played like 17 years in college football. He's gone. It might end up being Ethan Hampton, who I'm not super high on, but I like this defense, and I like Coach Hammock, his uh, grits, and this guy has shown that he could bring a random school in the MAC to the top of the league. He did it before in 2021, and now on the hot seats after a couple down years, I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Hammock's Huskies shock the world and win this conference of plus 650. Their defense returns a lot of their guys, um, only allowed 19 points per game in 2023, and they return eight starters out of 11. Hmm. Could be convinced, Krabs. That Couldn't team finished convinced. the season strong last year as well. Won a bowl game. Don't yep. sleep on Coach Hammock. I like the Huskies. Any other teams you're seeing value in down the board here? I've kind of talked myself into Bowling Green right below wow. NIU. Another one of those teams that, like, sneaky, uh, had a pretty good defense last season, especially closing the season. And uh, I've always sneakily been a Connor Basilek guy. Not that he's the greatest quarterback in the world, but I just like him for some reason. He's been a, a pretty solid game manager for him. Uh, he almost won them a game against Toledo in last season where they dropped that one by one point. That would have propelled them even further. But I don't know. I like that defense. Terion Stewart, I believe, is back to they have a not really good defense pretty much on every level. They have I forget the guy's name who's a NFL caliber safety, but maybe the next Quinion Mitchell to come out of the Mac. Uh, but I think they're dealing with pieces all around that are gelling. So in year 
for senior year of Connor Bazelak, I wouldn't be shocked if this Bowling mm. Green team makes some noise. I especially like, not that they're going to have any shot to win these games, but they're going to be tested in the non-conference a little bit, going to Penn State and to Texas A&M, two really, really good defenses. So I feel like mm. those are games where Bazelak is, I mean, really going to have to focus on not making mistakes and getting ready for the max schedule. So I, I am kind of in on Bowling Green. All right, so we like two value plays in the MAC. We're staying away from the, um, you know, former reigning champs of Miami of Ohio. We're staying away from Toledo with a new QB under center. They lose to Quan Finn to Baylor. Um, it should be Tucker Gleason probably taking over under center from Georgia Tech, yeah. who's got plenty of um, experience, and they still do have really good receivers. Toledo probably has the best receivers in the MAC, uh, but they've lost a ton on defense this year. Their defense was already not great. They kind of faded away last year. I don't want to buy stock in this Toledo team without Daquan Finn anymore. Um, and Western Michigan, I'm not extremely high on either. I'll tell you what, Javon, I think the two best plays here in the MAC are Northern Illinois at plus 650 and Bowling Green, like you were just talking about, at plus 700. I think you stay away from the couple favorites here and you go with more of a value play in the MAC because we know the MAC is filled with plenty of madness with these weekday games later on in the season. I think you take a value play here this year in 2024. I agree. I want some madness this year. It feels like it's the year for that in the MAC. Sure. So before we move on, what is your favorite future or your favorite play or team to back for 2024 in the MAC? I'm going to go with Bowling Green. They're over six and a half in total. All right. I'm going to go with NIU at plus 650 to win the MAC. I think they shocked the world. And Coach Hammock is back on top with the Huskies winning the MAC since the first time since 2021. And they've been pretty bad since. Bounce back here for the Huskies in 2024, okay? Let's talk about the Mountain West. Now, Javon, there's a lot of turmoil in the Mountain West this year. Seven of the 12 teams have new head coaches, so going to be a tougher conference to cap, but Boise State is a clear-cut favorite in 2024. They're actually minus money to win this conference. Are you as high on the Boise State Broncos as the odds makers are in 2024? Yeah. And it's it's getting really hard not to be because uh, I mean I'll tell you I'm I'm fans of some of the other teams in the conference that we'll talk about in a second like I like Colorado State really really love Hawaii those are longer shots though and I don't think they're touching the top Fresno State's dealing with some turmoil in there UNLV same deal like it's hard not to love Boise State because uh, again and not uh, another quarterback situation that I don't think is fully settled yet they seem to be in the media talking about it like it's not a certainty whatsoever, but Malika Nelson comes in for Boise State, and I think he's going to be great. Him and Ashton JT are – I don't know if there's many duos in the backfield better in all of college football, not just the Mountain West. Certainly the best in the Mountain West, but that's a ridiculous amount of talent. They also built both from within and returning production and also in the portal a lot of stuff in the trenches on both sides of the ball, which is huge when you're talking about potentially making a run at the CFP. So it's really, really hard not to love Boise State. I mean, they're a favorite and minus money in this conference, which I don't know how many times we've seen too much recently because usually there's a, a team or two that you can look at as a serious contender in the Mountain West for that second-place spot, even if it isn't Boise State in a given year. It's hard not to love them, Krabs. Could not agree more. And you got to respect Coach Danielson, who got that interim tag removed after a great ending of the 2023 season, right? They fired their coach at the beginning of the year. Not a great start. They had high expectations in 2023. Coach Danielson, I mean, they immediately removed the tag right after the season because he earned it. He deserves it. He brought that team back to the top of the Mountain West and made them competitive throughout the entire year. I'm very excited to see what Coach Danielson can do with a full season upcoming here in 2024. Yeah. And you mentioned their running back situation. Um, I mean, Ashton GT might be the best running back in college football, debatably. He's probably a top five running back in college football, definitely the best running back in the Mountain West. It's not even close. This kid will be in the NFL. Boise State has been known to have some running backs get to the league, right? You remember Doug Martin back in the day? Um, they've had a couple others as well. I think Mark's Ashton GT is the next guy up. Yeah, I think he's just absolute studs. And I would be shocked if Malachi Nelson doesn't start after coming over from USC, yeah. but we'll see how that plays out. We'll see how that plays out. We'll see. And while we're talking about uh, Bucks legends at Boise State, Krabs, not only do they have Danielson and the regime that I'm really buying into, they also brought in Dirk Cutter as the OC, who was 
the Ooh. coach and offensive guru for the Bucks under Jameis for so many years. And look, not the not the best coach, even though they would had their best year outside of like the Brady years when he was there with Jameis and they almost made the playoffs. But that guy is damn good with quarterbacks, damn good with ways to design an offense, which is why the Bucks offense was so good at that time. And he's done it at the college level as well. So I uh they did a lot of convincing to get him back there for this year. And I think that's gonna work wonders whether it ends up being nelson or whoever else all right do not sleep on the broncos and that smurf turf in 2024 mm -hmm. there's a reason why they have the shortest odds out of any group of five team to make the college football playoffs at plus 400 that's because they're stacked and they have a great coach and they have a great football program and i would love to see the broncos get back uh, to you know an elite level program in college football the sport is better when the broncos are good right i remember those crazy bowl games back in the day the Statue of Liberty plays, the running back proposing to his girlfriend, the cheerleader on the field afterwards. Absolutely electric. Kellen Moore, one of the best, most winning quarterbacks in college football history. Let's bring this program back to greatness. I miss it. All right, let's see what the Smurf turf um, provides us this year. And at minus 110, they're probably going to win the Mountain West. Javon, I have some thoughts on some of these teams in the middle of the pack, but I want your thoughts on Fresno State this season. What do you think about the Bulldogs? You know, Fresno State's a really confusing team to figure out, obviously, because the Tedford situation was weird. Uh, you know, he's a part of the program coming in, and health reasons kind of forced him out of that. So I'm just concerned in general with how that team is going to handle that, especially because it happens so late. Like, I, I'm not completely against Tim Skipper, but that's a team that I can't really get myself to buy into at this moment. I don't know about you. Yeah, I'm out on the Bulldogs, I'm liking UNLV much more. Ooh. Let me talk about them. They have the third shortest odds to win the Mountain West at plus 550 right behind Fresno State. And I am buying in to this UNLV team, even without Jaden Mavia. I don't even care that he's transferring. Good riddance, although that kid is an act he's a stud, right? Let's not act like he wasn't. But they bring in another stud, Matthew Saluka, an FCS legend from Holy Cross. I don't know if you've seen anything about this kid, but he can huck the football. That's for sure. And he can run a little bit, too. Um, they also return almost all of their offensive starters from last year. Now, their defense does need to improve. Their defense bit him in the ass at times last year. But I'll tell you what, this Matthew Saluka kid is a winner. I mean, he built that Holy Cross program up and was a QB there for years and racked up a ton of stats. His uh, highlights, his film is very, very impressive. Let's see how he translates um, to the next level up, you know, away from FCS and Holy Cross. But UNLV is a team that I'm buying into even after losing their starting QB, I like them at plus 550. And I think the odds makers do too, considering they lose their starting QB and they're still the third shortest odds to win the Mountain West. Yeah, I think there's certainly a shot. If I were to take any team relatively close as a, a big plus money chance to win the Mountain West, it would probably be UNLV. So I'm right there with you. Might have to get their get okay. back in the Mountain West championship game. Definitely helps to not only return all offensive starters, but one of those starters being Ricky White, who I don't know sure. why he didn't get talked about as enough or as much as he probably should have last year, but he is ridiculous. So, I mean, if you're talking about breaking in a new quarterback in that system, I don't know if you have uh, any better situation than the whole line coming back and throwing to that guy. Sure. I don't think their offense will skip a single beat without their QB. I think they could even be better with Saluka on yeah. your center. We'll see. I agree. All right. Buy stock in the Rebels at plus 550. I'm liking them to win the Mountain West. A couple other teams, sleepers to talk about here um, with odds in the middle of the pack to win the Mountain West. You got Air Force up next with the fourth shortest odds at plus 1100. I thought that was some serious respect, Javon, with this Air Force team losing their stud QB, Zach Larrier, who was dealing with injuries for a lot of last season. Um, and I think that kind of held them back a little bit as a program. They were really solid last year in 2023. It sucks that their QB got hurt. They were absolutely cooking in the beginning and middle of the season, but they just kind of fell off towards the end with their hurt QB. They also lose all five of their offensive linemen starters. Now this is Air Force, uh, schools like that, military schools. I mean, they absolutely manufacture athletic offensive linemen. It's not like they're going to be atrocious, but I mean, you lose five offensive line starters, you're not in a great spot. I don't care who you are. Yeah. I think Air Force takes a step back, but I was surprised to see them getting this line respect, Javon, at plus 1,100, the fourth shortest to win the Mountain West. Yeah, I think it plays a little bit into the fact that you have teams like San Diego State who are in a program 
I don't know if they would you consider them a rebuild. I don't know if I would call it a rebuild necessarily, mm. but they're just in a, a weird spot right now. Let's say that. Yeah. Same with same with Utah State for a couple of different reasons. You know, the tragedy with the team, but also the coaching staff and the players they have there right now. And I guess San Jose State, relatively same boat. So I just think they're the best out of the pack. Again, another one of these conferences that feels a little top heavy, minus a team or two. Agreed. Now, there is one more team in the middle of the pack that I want to talk to you about, Colorado State. Do not sleep on Colorado State under Coach Norvell. Remember all that beef between him and Colorado last year? And although they didn't live up to it, that game was probably a little bit closer than some would have expected. And I'm expecting um, a better season from Colorado State in 2024. Um, Their QB is very underrated, Braden fowler Nikolski, um, who's had 3,500 passing yards and nearly 25 touchdowns. Last season, unbelievable rising star. And they also have an All-American receiver in Torrey Holton, who's back for one more year. Cannot believe he didn't transfer. This kid's a stud. I would not sleep on this Colorado State offense, Javon. Um, let's not forget only, you know, five, ten-ish years ago, they were one of the better teams um, in their conference almost every year. They've fallen off a little bit of late, but I'm buying into their defense. Coach Norvell, I expect their defense to improve under him in 2024. And I really like this stud QB. Braden Fowler and Nikowski, I think he's very underrated and undervalued for Colorado State. I agree. The one one concern I have with them is just the offensive line. I mean, the defense yep. is bad too, but at least they're bringing a lot of guys back. So you would think, especially with Jay Norvell's background, that they're going to be better. Uh, the offensive line, like you're not giving Fowler Nicolosi much time to find Torrey Horton on all of these explosive plays, which is yep. the trouble. So I, I do like their over win total. I'm probably going to get to the counter with that. I just feel like the lows are going to be very low. So, like, they're they're going to lose a game they shouldn't. Uh, they have a pretty tough schedule, too, because they're playing Colorado, and I think that game's very winnable. And they also play Texas, I believe, first game of the season. So, I mean, there's a couple games where you know they're getting absolutely destroyed. But sure. I think the games the games that are winnable, they can they can win. So I'm, I'm kind of in. I think they beat Colorado at home this year and get revenge. Yeah, I think so, too. The odds in that game, although it's early, the season hasn't even started yet. It's a look ahead line. It'll change a lot before we get there. The odds, I feel like Colorado State's not getting many points against Colorado. I know they're home. I know it's a rivalry game, but um, that's a good sign for the Rams, in my opinion. Do not be surprised if Colorado State gets even better this season after an up and down 2023. All right. They also play Utah, Krebs. That's an easy win. Sure. (laughs) W's. Let's just fade UTEP all year. Sign me up. I mean, that's um, my goal. Javon, before we move, before we move, what is your favorite bet for the upcoming season in the Mountain West? Is it laying the juice with Boise State? Is it taking them to make the college football playoffs? Is it one of these other sleeper teams, middle of the pack to win? What do you got? I'm going to take you not to the middle of the pack, but towards the bottom. I like Hawaii's Ooh. win total over. Didn't talk Whoa. about them too much, but while well, we're talking about uh, look ahead lines for games, Week two, they open against Delaware State. That's a win on the island. Uh, Week two, we talked about this in the last spot. I think UCLA is going to be really bad this season. UCLA is coming to Hawaii, and they're going to lose that game. All right. So I like Hawaii. Braden Shager, Shager, I think, is going to be on NFL draft boards by the time we get around to February after the season. I think he's really good. They bring back a lot of production, too. So I think the offense is going to continue to do what it does. Shager is going to progress. The defense is going to be significantly better in my eyes and i think there's a solid chance they pull an upset against ucla and after that i don't want to say it's easy sledding for six wins in a bowl game but they have some very winnable games they host not only delaware state but northern iowa two fcs teams coming to the island i think they beat ucla who knows what's going to happen when they go to sam houston uh, with a bye actually after the ucla game to go to that game I think those are four winnable games to open the season. So I would not be shocked Whoa. if they're 4 0 to open the season. And they host some teams that I think they can beat in conference too. So I think that team's going bowling. They have an advantage at home as well. That's a really tough place to travel to, far as fuck away. Now it does hurt them on the road, but on the road, they're not expected to win anyways. I feel like them being that far away is actually overall an advantage for Hawaii because, I mean, their home games, they get a huge edge with these teams traveling all over the fucking country to get there. On the road, they're already probably not going to win anyways, in my opinion. This is Hawaii. This is not uh, Georgia, right? I thought it was pretty weird to see Hawaii and their win total at five with them having, you know, 
not great odds to win the Mountain West, not a great chance. The odds makers don't believe in them at plus 5,000 to win the Mountain West, but their win totals as high as five, and the overs yeah. juice to minus 130, Javon. Is Hawaii going bowling? I think they are, Krabs. And they I think a lot of people, bowling. a lot of people are going to be on that train with me after they beat UCLA on the island on week two. Sure. I cannot wait for that game. That's going to be must see TV. My goodness. If they pull off that upset, you are officially him. Okay. <laughs> That'll be absurd. That'd be what a call that would be. All right. Week two, mark your calendars, chat. All right. Javon's favorite play for the Mountain West this season, Hawaii's. Over win total? Over five? Over win total. I'm seeing some five and a halves too for plus money. I would love that. Okay. Because I want sure. to take the them five just, and a half. Prefer the five and a half. Get plus money for them to go bowling. Sure. Sign me up. I'm in. Let's bring Hawaii back to greatness. <laughs> All right. Let's see if they can win some games on the rock this year. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about the Sun Belt. Javon, the Sun Belt, a.k.a. the Fun Belt, this might be my favorite group of five conference to talk about. We've got really? App State. Yeah, App State is the betting favorite at plus 275. You've got Texas State right behind them, plus 400. The Raging Cajuns of Louisiana, plus 600. JMU, the Dukes, getting no respect after losing their entire team at plus 750. And then a bunch of other squads um, just fighting to stay relevant. Let's talk about the Sun Belt, all right? And let's talk about... This App State team that I think is one of the best group of five teams, if not the best group of five team going into the 2024 season. All right. They went on a crazy run last year to end the season. They ripped off five wins in a row to get into the Sun Belt title game. They finished the season very strong. And those are teams that I like to buy into, Javon, along with returning a star QB and Joey Aguilar. This kid had terrible, terrible games at times last year with some bad turnovers, but more often than not, he led that team to victory, and he's got an electric arm. This kid is going to be much, much better this upcoming season after a whole year under his belt starting. I am all in on Joey Aguilar. I think he's one of the best QBs in the group of five conferences. I mean, he has 3,800 yards and 33 touchdowns over the last couple of years. This kid is an absolute machine, and they have the best receiving core in the Sun Belt this year, Javon, probably why they're sitting at plus 275 as the betting favorites to win this conference. Are you as bought into App State as I am for this upcoming season? I don't know if I quite am, Crap. I'm mm. not going to lie to you. I kind of been drinking the Kool-Aid on Texas State this season. Who's right Whoa. there with them. The Bobcats? I mean, the Bobcats, who I think they're building something serious down there. And we have mm. the uh, the JMU transfer, Jordan McLeod, who is absolutely fantastic there. Uh, headed to Texas State. They bring a lot of pieces both in. I talked about that earlier. They brought in the two running backs uh, who I think are going to bolster that room as necessary for Jordan McLeod. And the defense, I think, is going to be really good. So if we're talking about one of the top teams, I feel like I'm a little more bought in Texas State than App State. Not that Whoa. I think App State's going to be bad, but that's where my head's at. Well, Texas State has the second shortest odds to win the fun belt at plus 400. You think that's a little bit of respect, a little more than you would have been anticipating for a school like Texas State? Or it looks like the odd maker, odds makers are bought in to some of the changes and players they brought in via the portal this offseason. Yeah, I, I think it seems like a little bit of respect, but I mean, that team's really, really deep now. So I'm I'm excited to see them. I guess odds makers are too. And yep. I think even though Arizona State's not going to be good, I feel like we all have come to that consensus. Arizona State going to San Marcos in, what is that, week three on a Thursday night? That's fucking awesome, dude. I love wow. that. And uh, I was looking at potential sleepers because I guess we're talking about their group of five. We're guaranteed to see a group of five team in the playoff. A lot of these teams play power conference teams, but they're ranked teams that I think realistically there's not much chance they lose. Like Memphis is going to FSU. I think the game will be close, but I don't think they win that game. Tulane has tough games against Oklahoma and Kansas State. Again, they could make it close, but I don't think they win that game. I feel like Texas State is in an interesting spot playing a team that I don't know what the line's going to be, but like they should be favored in that game, I would say. <laughs> uh, so like it's a power conference team in name, but one that I feel like they're going to beat. So maybe that's a little resume booster that looks a little better than it actually is. Yeah. And if everything goes right for Texas State, I wouldn't be shocked if they're inching towards getting ranked towards the end of the season. How's their conference schedule looking? 
it's not bad craps it's not bad at yeah. all they have like their tougher games i guess like they go to troy which i, I don't really know what troy is going to be this year i'll be honest that they lost their stud in, coach yeah, they so lost high. the coach. They lost. They lost all the NFL talents. So like, I don't think they're going to be nearly as good. But I have a weird feeling not to really count them out. Uh, they host Louisiana Lafayette, which is huge. They don't have to play James Madison or App State in the regular season. Like their toughest, toughest game or toughest trip, I would say, is to South Alabama. Like the the road game schedule is pretty cake. Yeah, so it sets up it sets up well. Game. They're looking good. Yeah, it sets up well. All right, you're putting meat on tape for the Texas State Bobcats? Yeah, I feel like they're going to be really fun to watch this season. And that mm -hmm. game against Arizona State, again, like Arizona State, they have a four-and-a-half win total. I think they're going under that. Not the point, but they're going to be a bad team. But them going to play Texas State in their house on a Thursday night early in the season, that's going to be awesome. And when Texas State hopefully wins that game, I feel like that's such such a huge confidence booster going into conference play. 100%. 100%. Are you kidding me? And I'm looking at their win total as well, Javon. Are you surprised that their win total is this juicy to the over and that it yes, said dude. eight anyways? It's, it's all the way up to eight. Yeah, it's high. And I mean, That's I'm crazy. not going to act like I'm not going to act like the talent they brought in with the talent they brought in it doesn't make sense cuz like McLeod is fantastic. Burgess and Hankins, one of the best backfields in that conference too. And I mean, they have plenty of wide receivers, talent across the board. And I think the defense is going to be pretty good too. So like, this is a Texas state team we've seen, I don't know, have the backbone of producing some upsets against FBS teams. They played some bad ones. They just beat Baylor. I think it was, was it last year or the year before year before, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think they have what it takes this season to maybe make a run at being that group of five teams. Dude, you're starting to convince me. I'm getting worried about my Appalachian State future. Listen to this as well. All right, because App State, the betting favorite to win the Sun Belt at plus 275. Texas State right behind them at plus 400. But if you look at the odds on their win totals, Texas State, win total is at eight. They're over, minus 135. App State, their win total is at eight. The over, minus 130. What does that mean? Let me talk to you like you're four years old. Texas State, has a juicier over on their win total at the same number as App State, but App State is, I don't know, almost 150, 200 cents shorter as, as the favorite here to win the Sun Belt. That is some weird line discrepancies with futures to win the Sun Belt and also win totals. That's throwing me off a little bit. That makes me feel like Texas State might be the sleeper. Hmm. They could be. And you want to hear, to talk about their schedule a little more for a bit, you want to hear their road games this season? I do. Talk about them. Grade them. Let me know what you think happens. Well, so first, the they, non-conference, they have a game at Sam Houston State, which, I mean, that's a cool little interstate rivalry. That game will probably be close. I think they can win that game, though. But in conference, all they have is Troy. They go to Old Dominion. They go to Louisiana Monroe. And then they go to South Alabama. That is – huh. I don't see any one of those games that is really going to give them all that much trouble other than maybe South Alabama, and that's a team that I, I really – don't know if I have a read on for this season. If anybody's watching on the YouTube, uh, the two teams, two out of the four teams that they go to in conference did not even fit on the graphic because they're so low on odds to win this conference in huh. Louisiana Monroe and Old Dominion. So I don't know if you could ask for anything to line up any better than Texas State in that schedule. Hmm. And yes, to all of our YouTube listeners, if you prefer to listen on Spotify or Apple Music, you can find this podcast on the Book It Sports Podcast Network, whatever you prefer. If you want to see our beautiful faces, come over to the YouTube page at Book It Sports. Drop a like. Let us know in the comments what you thought of the pods. If you prefer to listen, maybe you're on the move. Maybe you're doing some work. Uh, maybe you're going to the gym. Listen on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Music, and let us know what you think. All right. There is more to come with the football season on the way. We are so close. All right. Stay posted. We've got NFL podcast dropping soon. We've got fantasy football podcast dropping soon. I cannot wait. All right. There is more to come. I want to talk about a couple of these other teams here as well, Javon, in the Sun Belt before we um, finish up this, this conference. Let's talk about JMU. All right. JMU had an incredible season last year. At one point, they were undefeated towards the end of the year. Great run. Um, they were ranked, I believe, at one point as well, um, although they are not the best team in the state of Virginia uh, because they lost their coach to Indiana. They lost their QB to Texas State, like you were talking about earlier. 
Uh, but they do bring in Dylan Morris from Washington, who will be um, solid enough replacing him at QB. Now, eight of their top 10 tacklers on defense, Javon, did leave, either graduate or transfer to hit the portal when their coach left, which is very common. It's going to be a really tough year for the Dukes, I think, to replicate their success from 2023, missing their coach, who was a stud, and missing all these players who left as soon as he uh, made the move, right? I'm not buying low on JMU with a new coach. I do think that program will get back to greatness like they always do. I feel like they cycle through a new coach like every decade and then they figure it out, but it's going to take them a little bit. I'm not buying stock into, into the Dukes in 2024. All right, no thank you. And then Marshall as well, not getting much line respect and probably for good reason. I feel like this program has taken a step back since their legendary coach who was there forever, almost like their mini Frank Beamer, uh, retired two years ago. They've really taken a step back since then, Javon, and they don't have Rasheen Ali, one of the best running backs in football um, either this season. So that's probably why Marshall's not getting line respect like they typically would in the Sun Belt. I think it's going to be a tough year for Marshall. And if anything, you could probably look to fade them on their win total. The fact that they're getting this much disrespect on their odds to win this conference that they typically are towards the top in, I think tells you all you need to know about Marshall and the Thundering Herd for 2024. Yeah, I, I agree with you on both those takes. I do think like JMU, their schedule is also relatively soft. Like they played North Carolina in non-conference and then they go through a stretch where they're playing, frankly, all the shitter teams in the Sun Belt before they eventually play App State. So it feels like that App State game is like a, it could be a potential game for a trip to the Sun Belt Championship to play against maybe a Texas State. So if you do like JMU this season, you better be pretty damn sure they can win that game. That's what I would say. Um, yep. But but Marshall, I'm, I'm definitely right there with you. They're losing like the defensive in the backbone. That's one of the reasons I backed them two years ago in one of my big futures. Um, but those guys are, are gone now. Owen Porter, one of the craziest linebacker or most underrated linebackers, I think, in all the group of five is gone. Alston, I think, is gone from the secondary too. So, yeah, they're gutted. And I can't say I am that big a fan of Pennington under center either. Yeah, go and give me the under six wins at minus 130 for Marshall for this upcoming season. W push potential there as well, but I don't even expect yeah. them to make a ball game. I really They're don't. It's going to be average. They're going to be average. They'll Agreed. lose to somebody they shouldn't and probably beat somebody they shouldn't too. Yep. It is Marshall. All right. Yeah. Still not buying stock in that program. I think they are on um, the decline, unfortunately. All right. Any other sleeper, dark horse type teams in the Sun Belt? Me personally, Javon. I think it's a two-horse race. I think it's going to be App State and Texas State in the championship, and I'm looking to try to find odds if I can bet that to be the conference championship in the Sun Belts. I've already seen it, right? I talk about a lot of value plays in the other group of five conferences, but not in the Sun Belt this year. I think it's App State and Texas State making it to the championship, and I personally think it's going to be App State, but I know you like the Bobcats at plus 400. I do like the Bobcats, and – this team, I don't think they're going to contend to win the Sun Belt because I'm with you. I think it's a two-horse race, but a team that I'm definitely keeping my eye on because I think they're going to be a team I'm definitely targeting for overs because their offense, I think, is going to be really good, just like it was last year. Arkansas State, I think they are going to be a sneaky team, one of those teams that are kind of in the middle there that maybe punches up and beats a couple teams on their schedule, like maybe pulls an upset. I, don't, I hope it's not against Texas State because that's – on the road, so I'm hoping it's not that, but maybe they beat a Louisiana Lafayette. Uh, they beat a Troy, who's a team that's right there with them. Uh, but that offense was sneakily good. Like Jalen Rayner came in and in the middle of the season last year, and the second he was in there, he looked damn good. The offense looked really mm -hmm. good, and they bring in a, a lot of pieces too, and they have depth now at the quarterback position. They brought in Timmy McLean from UCF. Uh, so I think that offense is going to be good. And in non-conference, I mean, they have two games that they have no shot to win, but they're against really good defenses. They go to the big house and play Michigan. Uh, and they also go to Ames to play Iowa State. I feel like that's a fantastic fucking tune-up for an offense that's going to be really good to go against those defenses, even if they're going to struggle for a bit. So I think that team's going to put up plenty of points. If you're looking for an over-target all season in the Sun Belt, I think it's coming from the Red Wolves. So I will be – Paying attention to that all season. Well, you're going to have to lay minus 170 if you want to take their over win total. That's ridiculous <laughs> that that has not yeah. gotten bumped up to six yet, but they're over five and a half wins for Arkansas State is at minus 170. So maybe look for a line somewhere at six instead of laying that juice. Um, although I do think that team could shock some people, and that's some serious respect for a program that has not been great. Um, 
really ever in the Sun Belt. I feel like let's buy stock after they showed some heart last year. I'm in. Yeah, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but they do play Tulsa. They host Tulsa week two. I don't know if that would be considered an upset or I don't know what the line maybe or may not or what it, what it will be. But like I think they have a pretty good shot to beat Tulsa, which could set things off for a win total pretty early. Yep. This might, we might have to rename this podcast the Fading Tulsa Podcast. Right? I'm at, I feel like <laughs> we've maybe. talked about it three times. Um, all right. And also, side note, I know I talked about not buying stock in Detroit after losing their stud coach. I do like their under win total at six and a half and minus 120. I feel like that's a pretty solid price to lay. Um, and that team still somehow can make a bowl game. And, um, you know, you cash your win total there at under six and a half. So um, I think they win five games this year. I don't even think Troy goes bowling, but we'll see how it yeah. works out. You lose a stud coach like that, who is really the heart and soul of a program and built them up from the ground. I'm not expecting much from Troy in 2024 after a pretty solid year last year. Right. Any other teams that you want to gas up or fade in the Sun Belt before we move? No, I think we'd covered it. I'd say my my favorite play in the Sun Belt is Texas State over eight wins, and I haven't peeped at the line, but maybe this is the long shot, super super long shot out of all the teams to maybe be that Group of Five team to make the playoff. Wow, and we're going to talk about that here in a moment. But first. Let's go ahead and close the Sun Belt out. Ladies and gents, I hope you enjoy listening to this college football group of five preview. I've got a couple questions for Javon here before we go. All right, number one, what is the conference in the group of fives, Javon, that you're looking forward to betting on the most in this 2024 season? I already told you mine is the Sun Belt, a.k.a. the Fun Belt, really high on App State this season. I would say mine is going to be the American, and part of that's because – Probably my favorite win total in all of college football has to do with Rice. But I feel like, like we talked about, that conference is just so open. I feel like you're going to have plenty of opportunity to bet dogs, whether it's Rice or some of those other teams, and definitely plenty of opportunities for points because all of those offenses are really good and all of those defenses, frankly, are not. So I have a feeling I will be involved in a lot of American games this season that don't just have to do with Rice. Could not agree more. I got one more question for you before we go, Javon. This is what the people have been starving for. They need your answer. They're foaming at the mouth, waiting to hear your response. Javon, who is your pick from the group of five to make it to the college football playoffs? It's a chalky answer, potentially, but I'm going to go with Boise State. That talent with that offense is just something I can't pass up because I feel like it's pretty – agreed upon who the favorites are to make it out. I think Boise State, you said, has the shortest odds to do it. Uh, You have Boise, you have Memphis, you have Liberty. Uh, You could even include Tulane in there. I know you like Texas State could be up there too, but that's probably just me giving them a shot. Uh, A lot of these teams have big-time non-conference games, like Boise's going to Oregon. I feel like that's a solid test. You got Memphis going to FSU. Tulane's got the two games against the uh, Big 12 and former Big 12 teams. So I don't know if Boise is going to win at Oregon, but I feel like that gets them ready and juiced up against a really good offense. And the talent level is just so much better than the rest of the Mountain West. So I'm taking Boise State. All right. There's a reason why they have the shortest odds out of anybody in the group of fives to make the college football playoffs at plus 400s. They got a pretty damn good chance. Let's see if the Broncos can get back on top and return to their elite form and make the goddamn playoffs. I would love to see it. Absolutely love to see it. Um, I've got three picks, kind of cheating here. I'll give you my favorite one and make it very clear. The number one pick I have, who I think is going to make the group of five uh, college football playoffs, and it's Tulane at plus 1,000. I already talked about him earlier, gassed him up. I am buying stock in a team that faded away down the stretch last year, a team that now has a new coach that I am obsessed with coming over from Troy that is going to fix that defense. Javon, you talked about that conference, the American. A lot of teams that could score points, not a lot of teams that could play defense. You get a Tulane squad that has not relied on the defense much of late, but the new coach comes in. He's defensive-minded, comes over from Troy after making that defense elite for the group of fives. I'm buying stock in a coach Sumrall and this Tulane squad who has plenty of options at QB with Michael Pratt on the way out. They've got some options. They have an elite offensive line, probably the best offensive line in the American Conference, and their deep, their defense should improve drastically in 2024. 
under a defensive-minded coach, which could give them an edge in a conference that really relies heavily on points, points, points. Nobody plays defense. Tulane taking a different approach here, bringing in a defensive-minded coach. That gives them an edge, in my opinion, in that conference to potentially win it and then end up going on to the college football playoffs at plus 1,000. Okay, I also like App State. A plus a thousand, like I talked about earlier, I'm really high on Joey Aguilar, and I think that App State team will potentially win the Sun Belt against your Texas State squad. That'll be the championship. I like them at plus a thousand, and then more of a value play, Miami of Ohio at plus twenty five hundreds. I think that defense will be just as elite as they were last year. Who's to say they can't go undefeated, Javon? They're probably going to need some help from some of the other conferences and teams in the group of fives. But if none of those teams, like Tulane, Boise State, App State, Memphis, are impressing, Maybe an undefeated Miami of Ohio team from the MAC sneaks into the college football playoffs. And although they'll probably get blown out by an actually good team, that would be cool to see a squad like that from the MAC make it to the playoffs in an expanded season. Yeah, that would be really cool. And I guess we should mention because Liberty is, I think they also are tied for the shortest odds with with Boise. Sure. I didn't bring up I didn't bring up all those teams having power conference games in the non-conference for no reason. Liberty seems to be the only team out of the favorites that doesn't have one for obvious reasons. They can't schedule like that. And their toughest non-conference game, I think, is ECU. Could be mistaken mm. on that. But that's why like, I, I find it hard to believe with this new 12-team playoff system that any one of these teams, whether you're talking about Boise going to Oregon, Memphis going to FSU, Tulane hosting K-State, going to OU, yada, yada, yada. I feel like you're co probably going to have a big conference trip or non-conference trip in there, whether you win or whether you lose. I feel like it's got to be a part of your resume. So I'm very not interested in Liberty, even if they go undefeated this season. I feel like it's going to be really hard for them to get in. Right. I feel like if they do go perfect again, they probably do get in. But my goodness, if they go perfect two years in a row in the regular season, I will be shocked and I will charge you to yeah. the game. <laughs> I mean, look, if they were returning their entire team from last year, I'd be interested, but that O-line is depleted. I feel like they peaked, although I like Caden Salter. He's going to have a tough time behind a fresh O-line this season. They're not going to look as sharp. He's not going to be able to be as much of a dual threat as he's been in years past. I think they're in trouble. And like you said, they don't have any opportunities to pull off any great wins in non-conference because their schedule is cupcake. Maybe they get um, you know, some points knocked off there. Compared to some teams like Tulane, who's got two games against ranked squads, App State, who's got a couple tough non-conference games. Let's see how the committee respects these teams who actually try to play tough non-conference schedules, right? And I feel like they probably will respect those teams more or give them the tie, at least if it's close down the stretch. Yep, agreed. Sure. All right, well, that's plenty of group of five talk for one day. All right, I hope everybody who listened enjoyed. I hope everybody watching on YouTube drops a like and lets us know in the comments what they want to hear from us next. All right, we've got fantasy football on deck. We've got NFL um, divisional previews and conference previews on the way as well. Let us know in the comments on YouTube at Book It Sports what you want to hear from us next and during the football season as well. And follow us on YouTube, Twitch. We have BTL, our betting show, live every single day at 12.30 p.m. Eastern during the week, going over winners for you. Do not miss out. All right, if you have not checked out our live show yet, try to make it a point to come by either Twitch or YouTube at 12.30 p.m. Eastern uh, and get some winners and help build your bankroll for this upcoming football season. Javon, it was a pleasure talking about these group of five schools with you. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. And we appreciate everybody listening to drop a follow on the Book It Sports Podcast Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. We'll be back soon. We'll be soon.